What's going on guys? Do you want to know about the red stripe leopard gecko? Well, there's two kinds and in this video, we're going to show you all about it. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. Now the tricky thing about red stripe leopard geckos is that there's two kinds of them. One is typically more popular than the other, but they both exist. So let's tackle the most popular one. Red stripe leopard geckos typically only appear in tangerine related leopard geckos. So whatever the history of the creation of this morph, it seems to have popped up within the tangerine lineage. You'll commonly see them with emmerine coloration as well, green coloration. And in our collection over here, we took a inferno tangerine that is not red stripe and bred it to another inferno tangerine that is not red stripe and we started popping out red stripes and now we have a whole bunch of red stripes over here so either the trait is genetically linked to one of the tangerine lines or some of the tangerine lines since they've all been inbred to a certain degree or it's its own trait that is either dominant, co-dominant, incomplete dominant, or recessive. Now, it officially has not been labeled as such. And if you were to go to Morph Market right now, you'll see that it is labeled as other. It doesn't have its own category. Whether it's line bred, recessive, dominant, incomplete, they don't know what it is. And Morph Market does a really great job of talking to breeders and researching the actual genetics behind what an animal is. So if they can't identify it as a specific genetic trait, just take that as it is difficult to identify at this point. Nonetheless, we do see a lot of red stripes pop up in leopard geckos. So let's take a look at some red stripes. So here we have some red stripes by the urban gecko, and you can see that some of the red stripes are easier to identify than others. I like to look at this one as being called a hidden red stripe. And you could even see it in one of our leopard geckos up on Morph Market right now, you can see the red stripes barely poking through, and it might even start to disappear as the gecko gets older and becomes an adult. Our good old faithful friend leopard gecko wiki has a good example of some red stripe leopard geckos i told you guys from the start if you're just getting into leopard geckos and you want to identify traits leopard gecko wiki is a great tool to be able to help you see what different traits look like in leopard geckos and how can we forget the legend ron tremper himself of course the master of the red stripe leopard gecko he has a few up on his page right now showing and demonstrating the look of the red stripe leopard gecko and you can see that some red stripes are more hidden than others but the breeder's eye will tell them, especially as the baby's growing up, you can see those two little stripes growing in and you can know that this is red stripe lineage for sure. And in some other leopard geckos, it's very, very clear to see the red stripe distinction. Okay, now this brings us to our second type of red stripe leopard gecko, what I call the pattern separation red stripe leopard gecko. So the first one is like a pattern addition. It doesn't affect the pattern in a way, it's independent of everything else going on on the leopard gecko looks wise. It's independent of color, it's independent of shading, it's independent of shape and pattern. It's its own unique individual thing that just stripes and highlights the back of the gecko on both sides of the spine with a usually a bright orange or bright red colored, very thin stripe. Now, if you breed crested geckos, this is actually gonna be an easy point for you to understand. Look at our second example of red striped leopard geckos. This is a pattern separation. If you breed crested geckos, you'll know that in crested geckos, there's something called empty back. And it's what a lot of breeders are breeding for nowadays. And it basically means that the middle of the back, right over the spine, has no pattern, no spotting, no dots, no lines, no anything. And if you do that in leopard geckos, specifically tangerine leopard geckos, this is what you get. You get a leopard gecko that has its pattern separated parted like the Red Sea. If the middle of the back is completely hypo, it has no pattern, no color, no spotting, none of that, then both sides on opposite sides of the spine are going to appear to be as if they're stripes 
because the leopard gecko's back goes down long ways like a fish. So it can't help but the pattern and the color is gonna stretch out long ways. This I could almost call an accidental red stripe because for the middle of the back of a leopard gecko to be completely blank, you either need one of two things. One, you just need to be really, really lucky when you're breeding hypo leopard geckos that you get this specific expression where the back is completely empty. I've seen this a few times. It does pop up frequently with hypo leopard geckos, but at this time again, I don't know if it's dominant, co-dominant, incomplete dominant. There is word out there that hypo is both line bred and a dominant trait. So maybe this is the dominant hypo taking form over the middle of the back. The other option is reverse stripe. So if you know anything about reverse stripe leopard geckos, they basically start with a black stripe down the middle of their back that black stripe will fade in time. It will usually fade to purple and then it will fade to possibly green and then sometimes it will just fade into the exact color of the gecko's back or it will kind of become colorless. Like in these examples that we see here, the reverse stripe just fades out into a lighter shade than the body tone of the gecko, which gives it this separation of color appearance. I call it two-tone appearance. Here's a great example of the hypo or the empty back syndrome, like I was just talking to you guys about, from baby to juvenile to adult. And you can see that that baby comes from tangerine lineage and it was born with a empty back. And then as its color, its tangerine color develops over time, that empty back stays empty, stays lighter, and the sides fill in to become orange, which now we have a red stripe leopard gecko in the second form. Now, personally, I really like the first kind of red stripe leopard gecko. It was also used to make clowns. So within the clown genetics, you will often see a lot of red stripes. Now, red stripes do something really unique. If you're breeding red stripe into any of your projects, you are most likely going to get enhanced color and you're gonna have a good opportunity to mix up the pattern a little bit, make it a little wonky, a little jungly, and create a really cool looking gecko. So that's why it's my favorite type of red stripe leopard gecko. What is your favorite type of red stripe leopard gecko? Also, what did you think about this video? Did you learn something more about red stripes? Let me know in a comment below what you learned and what you feel like you still don't understand. Just remember that red stripe leopard geckos are often very bright, very good looking geckos, and so you can't go wrong investing in them. So I thank you guys for joining me in this episode. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, have a geeky gecko. Great day. Peace.